Welcome everybody to the first match of the quarterfinals of the Super Mario Brothers Randomizer Tournament 2019. I'm the Haxer, and tonight I'm joined on the comms by Gimp Extreme. What's going on, Gimp? Not too much. How you doing, Haxor? Doing pretty well, man. I'm pretty excited for this race. Uh, this is, you know, obviously we got Mitch, who uh, is very well known as, you know, at least right now, the, the best Mario 3 player in the world. Uh, but, um, you know, Booba's got probably got the edge on randomizer experience for him or compared to him tonight. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Definitely. I think Abuba's he's going to be one of those sleepers. You got to watch out for him because I played him last week. He beat me, but we had close races. But overall, I think if he plays really clean, it's going to be a really tight race. Yeah, I think the key for him, you know, and I, I know Booba for quite a while. I've raced against him and Vanilla and Randomize and all this stuff. Um, I think he gets a little nervous before races. So I think the key for him is just maybe kind of just quell the nerves a little bit. Just get rolling. Don't make the the routing mistakes. We saw him make a few last week. Um, and obviously he can't really afford those tonight, most likely. Yeah, I talked to him shortly after this race and I told him, hey, just, you know, our race last week, I said, just keep your, keep your calm, stay focused and don't worry about your opponent. Just play well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Mitch aside, you know, he had three really close ones last week. He actually had a huge lead in the first one and then had some routing mistakes at the end of that one that ended up allowing uh, pro a to come back into it. And actually all three of those really could have gone either way at the end of the day. So I think the key for him is to just, you know, not make some of the routing mistakes that we've seen him make on occasion. So it looks like the runners are off here. Um, checking this first pipe to see uh, where it leads here in World 6. That's an interesting layout there. You got two locks and then the bridge obviously is going to be needed to be built. So looks like both yeah. of them. Oh, Iboob's going to go back. I think he's going to play the stage and then head back to the fort in the middle of the map. So yeah, it looks like they just need the one um, lock to be broken, and they know from that point the the world's free. So just uh, it's kind of a gamble to see, you know, which uh, which fort it's going to be. So we actually see a divergence of routes here going to do different forts. So someone's going to have a pretty significant advantage here. Exactly. Yeah, you, you don't know. I mean, Ibuba definitely got the easier stage of the two, so depending on what he needs to do. Because where that fort's located, there's a second fort where Mitch was able to get to. So that's the Navy stage. Yeah, it looks like they're all kind of clustered there. So um, obviously we'll have a good idea of what's going on here after this level. And oh, Booba taking on fortunate death from those Sledge Bros there. They're kind of evil in that, that double Sledge bro setup. Yeah. You gotta watch out for the quakes that definitely stuns you and then if you miss them when you're big they break right through the block and stomp right back on you so you gotta watch out for that stuff yeah and it's kind of evil when that that front one doesn't jump but the back one decides to you're just like oh come on man like <laughs> i'm just I trying to you know get rid of you i can't tell you how many times i've died just to that type of a hammer brother Probably not as many times as the fire row, but yeah, for sure. It's, yeah. oh man, it's rough. So I think Mitch has, uh, no, he hasn't figured out the fort. Okay, so we'll see if this one is the one that, uh, so yeah. that is the fort that Boob is looking for. All right. Uh, that gamble did pay off for him. Mitch is probably going to play this. No, he's going to, he's going to take the pipe. That's a huge jump, actually. Yeah, that's actually quite a that's a great hammer usage. Wow, that uh yeah, that's where did he he got that from a hammer bro, right? Yeah, so uh Mitch is about half a stage ahead at this point. Or no, two a stage and a half actually. Yeah, uh yeah, that was a really fantastic uh, hammer usage. It's really fortunate when you get those, but you don't always get lucky there, so Yeah, it looks like he got about a full stage on him there. Still wouldn't count like Booba out though. That's the thing with the randos. It's even if it's one stage, it seems like a lot, but both these runners are really good, so like they can make up that time in a stage or two. Yeah, and I I didn't notice uh, Booba did fight a hammer bro as well. Did he uh, end up getting a hammer from that? I missed the item. No, he died because it was a 
the oh yeah, that's right. Through okay. one and just kind of got him on the way out. So yeah, he was able to avoid it there. That's that's unfortunate, but he's not too far behind, all things considered. So no, and I think Mitch right here is doing the right thing. You want to play this fort? If there's a fort right at the beginning of World Seven, just play it. Get it out of the way. Well, I think especially in this case, you see the lock down there, so you're going to get all the information you need um, right here. Um, so I, I think this is war a warranted play. Sometimes it's worth skipping them, especially if they're behind levels, because uh, I find a lot of times the, the four you need is in your route anyway, but it, it's always a gamble um, to do one or the other, I guess. Yeah, that's kind of the the thought of randomizer at this point is you see us you see the fort you play it regardless just so you get some sort of intel so yeah he knows that um you know he's not going to need a lock at the end of the world and of course the first pipe he checks goes right there so it's going to be an easy world seven for both runners here and that's something i've noticed in the bracket stages world sevens have actually been pretty generous there's only been a few tough ones i've seen yeah, I think this is a big deal for, you know, I think both runners feel good about this, that they're not going to lose the race right here, because potentially, with the way some of these are set up, you just end up losing just in this world alone, so. Absolutely. So yeah, we get to see a hand stage, so we'll get an opportunity to see what item the hands are going to give us tonight, and uh, hopefully it's a good one. Yeah, Mitch having a little trouble there with the cheap cheeps. But I believe is struggling here with uh, Boss Bass on his 8-2 stage. Yeah, Boss Bass, not as bad on this stage as the uh, the cheap cheap. You know, that's probably my least favorite for 8-2, and you seem to get it more. It's definitely not an enemy you want to see either way. Yeah, Mitch uses his music box there. I don't blame him. You want to get as much, much of a lead as you can get. Not that he knows he's in the lead, but sometimes that Piranha stage, if you're going to get another music box out of it, it's kind of a waste. Yeah, after discussions with him, um, that's what he believes is the best usage of that item, is uh, using it right there. And and I agree, um, you know, if you're going to skip one stage, that one is definitely the longest, more than, you know, a single hammer brother. But, um, you know, I actually, in, in this flag set, I, I actually appreciate the uh, music boxes. They tend to be pretty handy. Yeah, because if you're playing Hammer Bros, that's that's a minute right there. That's that's a lot of time you could lose just trying to get items, and you can end up with absolute garbage. So. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, as Pro A points out, it is a Fred because we got the World Seven airship and World Seven. Yeah, but it's a weak Ludwig there. One hit KO. Yeah, if you can get the setup to skip two bros, it's definitely better, but, um, you know, in terms of single stage anyway. Yeah, one thing to keep in mind, uh, the World 7 letter you get from Bowser does contain an item. It just doesn't tell you what it is. Yeah, that's a good point. So, yeah, this is kind of a... So he knows that this isn't going to be the required for it, right? Um, he's probably going to grab the item here, though. Um, since this this fort's never in the logic, so you know this one does not build the bridge. And he gets rewarded with the music box. <laughs> well, maybe you can use it to skip a few hammer bros later, you know? That's true, you never know. You never know. Oh, we got both World 8 stages here already. 8-1 for Mitch. Yeah, honestly, if that's the fort, that's going to be not the fort. It's a pretty quick one, so I don't think either runners are going to complain too much. No, not at all. And either way, they're going to have to play an extra stage to get to the other fort, so I think they both did the right thing by just grabbing the item and then playing 4-6 up here. Yeah, and obviously they don't know, but especially with this this stage here, you, it's nice to have the power up. So taking the death there is quite a risk. Yeah, so we've got two Ford on Mitch's screen here, and that's one of the, the things I notice about this Ford is it's so hard to be able to run through it. Um, you really want to, and and generally in vanilla, it's a really easy Ford to get through. But it, it seems like the enemies never line up the way they're supposed to in random. No. Especially that last one in the first section of the of the Desert 2 Fort. That hot foot, for me, always seems to be one of the drunk ones that kind of walks on the zone. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the one before the pipe, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I always lose my power up right there because he decides to walk backwards. So yeah, that one looks like it actually behaved that time. Um, but yeah, also the the hot foot that uh, you always seem to get in the spike section here it seems to be drunk most of the time. But uh, looks like they got some obedient ones this time around. I actually think the obedient ones are a little more rare in Randomizer. <laughs> I agree with you, man. Them and, you know, actually obedient uh, bloopers are things you don't see very often. No. Miss using that screen transition skip to get over the Hammer Brothers is a nice little save of time there. Yeah, it was nice. He didn't have to use a music box, so he'll, he'll have that for later um, to potentially skip some enemies. And there, Ibuba's going to use his just to get to the airship. So yeah, things are going really well for both of them thus far. I mean, uh, Mitch really hasn't made any separation since that, that early hammer usage, so... Yeah, no, Ibuba's been right behind him. I wouldn't say he's lost any or even gained any. It's been pretty close race so far. And as Pro points out, all three one-hitters. Looks like an easy <laughs> seat this time around. So, um, it's worth noting that Mitch used his Fire Flower and, and Abuba has it, so saving that for Bowser is going to allow him to save a little bit of time if they don't get any more inventory that allows him to get the fast kill. Yeah, that was a strategy I kept in mind when I was playing myself, because uh, once I got to World 6 of... I didn't get another flower. I was not going to touch that until I got the World 8. Yeah, I, I know from playing with him that, um, you know, the biggest thing for him is not dying. Um, and I tend to agree, you know, deaths are worse. So if you got to burn it to not die, I think you just got to kind of do it, right? Absolutely. So yeah, this stage is actually surprisingly difficult, even though the auto scrolls removed from it. You gotta really keep moving forward, and uh, sometimes, <laughs> you know, you might miss a platform or something, and you take a death and lose a lot of time on that stage. Yeah, and the big thing I noticed early on in the group stage, a lot of the newer runners were having a hard time with it because it wasn't on an auto scroll. Yeah, for sure. So we actually see. Mitch getting pretty much the best item if you already have power-ups to get at the beginning of 5-3 there, a star just kind of allows you to run through the rest of the stage. Um, yeah, the star is actually... In, skipping it. Yeah, and the randomizer stars are actually brilliant items. The moment you see them, if you have a power-up and the star is there, that's great. You can just charge, head straight for the exit, yeah. not have to worry about anything. Especially when they show Seems up like stages, this they don't show up. Oh yeah, for sure. It seems like they tend to troll you though, and you know, you'll just keep getting stars when you're like, I need a power up right now. Just come on, I, anything but a star. I remember watching you and Mitch practicing the other night and he kept getting stars and getting pretty upset about that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, this World 3 layout's not too bad. They do have to play four stages before they can get to that pipe. Yeah, it's one thing I've noticed about World 3, it seems like you almost always get a setup like this right now, where it's you're playing three or four stages before you even get to check a pipe. Yeah, I, I honestly think World 3 is more of a troll than World 7 can be, because I think routing in World 3 is really important, just knowing where to go and what to do. Um, because usually people are prepared for the World 7 to be a troll, but when World 3 brings out the dark side of it, it tends to hurt a lot of the runners. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we see Booba playing the, uh, the well, 5-6 with the auto scroll removed. That, that stage is uh, deceptively difficult, I think. Um, it's really nice when you have the tail, obviously. But yeah, some of those jumps, especially at the beginning, are, are hard to make because they're so long. That and plus, uh, sometimes the one of the parabeetles doesn't show up, so you have to kind of like yeah, that's true. Forward a bit to bring them out. Yeah, despawning things, despawning it's a disaster, especially in levels like five nine, right? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, the 5-9 with the Fire Chomp. If you see that, kill the Fire Chomp ASAP, because it's not going to spawn the platform. So I know Mitch generally tries to keep his fire through this. It looks like he's going to get the one cycle with the fire, so very nicely done there. Yeah, the randomizer, you don't generally see that one cycle without getting hit, so... That was a good good play yeah. by Mitch. <laughs> the, uh... The, the disco waffles really need to uh, behave for you to be able to do that. That or the hot foot or the dry bones, whatever shows up. <laughs> Pretty much. Mitch does grab a P Wing, which would be useful if 7 6 shows up or even Fort Knox, one or the other. If he decides yeah, to it's... use it that way. So it looks like he found the lock. Um, it's. Yeah, it's good that he was able to make a fight with at least some, you know, sort of power up because, I don't know, a lot of times when you draw that water fire with the two fire bros, it's usually a disaster, right? Yeah, I, any water platform with fire, any kind of bros can be difficult. Especially if you're small, you're literally swimming in the water. So yeah, he makes it out of the world here, but Booba's right on his heels still. Still no separation here. It seems like a really quick seed, which I honestly think that, um, you know, as skilled as Booba is, he's probably at a little bit of a skill disadvantage in in, uh, in this matchup, but uh, a quick seed like this, I think, helps him a lot. Exactly, yeah. Getting those nerves off, too. I mean, I don't know how Mitch feels about it. He's probably not too nervous, but most of us that don't, you know, when we get further in the brackets, we get really nervous <laughs> at first race. But once you yeah. get that rust off of our fingers, we feel pretty good. So the second race should be a lot more exciting, too. Yeah, the way this has gone right now, it looks like, um, you know, World 8's really going to be a decider on this one. And it uh, looks, are we having some technical difficulty on Mitch's stream there? Um, looks Possibly, like Possibly, yeah. He finds himself in the Piranha Fort for World 5. I'm going to switch to Booba's audio for now, see if uh, we can get that figured out. All right, looks like looks like we're good, I think. I, I should mention that is the, absolutely the best item you can get from that block uh, yeah, this level. Um, and yeah, since you know both of these are very skilled vanilla runners, they're going to understand exactly what to do with that. <laughs> we see yeah, Booba actually doing vanilla strats there. Let's say I think I saw you do that earlier tonight. Nice little yeah. trick. I'm gonna have to pencil in after for I died. For yeah. <laughs> we don't talk about that. We're, no, no, no. What death? I didn't see anything. <laughs> so Mitch is gonna check this All pipe right. here. Let's see what this takes him up, up around the Sky World. Either way, so, yeah. he's gonna have to play three stages. Yeah, it looks like a fine pipe to take, so... Um, unfortunately, this is not the level you want to see, really, but uh, he's quite good at this one. Um, he was playing one warp not too long ago, so he, he had to do some really different strats in this level in that category, so it's not gonna be much of a problem. No. Nice Tanuki suit. I love the Tanuki suit. It's probably one of my favorite items. You can get a lot of good uses out of it, especially with that uh, statue ability. Yeah, hopefully we can uh, see some statue swag coming out here. So it is worth noting, it looks like Booba did the extra fort, because uh, I, I think Mitch only did one. Right? Is that right? Oh, no, Mitch, Mitch did both. I oh, he did. Okay. Okay, because, yeah, the second one made the, the bridge, I guess. Mm -hmm. First one made the bridge, the blue one destroyed the lock that was blocking the pipe, so... Um, whenever it comes to World 5, that blue fort will always break a lock. Yep, yep. Yeah, we're, we're on pace to see a command coming up here, so... Uh, let's see if he's able to keep this Tanuki. Find another hand stage here for Mitch. He's fighting the uh, the Hammer Bro stage for the hand stages. Yeah. Wow. Booba actually almost made it all the way through without taking damage. That would have been... Ooh. Oh. Got to be careful about chasing that mushroom. Oh, no. Oh, no. 
Yeah, he's probably gonna have to burn some inventory here. Eh, it's not a bad item. Could have used the star as well. Yeah, the P-Wing's not a bad item there. It's, um, it's okay for the stage. The stage is actually longer than it seems. Uh, but taking that bottom pipe does help cut out quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, generally it'd be slower, but in randomizer you don't really know what's coming next, so it's it's kind of a gamble to not take the the free exit, basically. Yeah. So th that does give Mitch a three stage lead at this point, but you never know. It's rando, so things can happen. World eight is what we call the great equalizer, and we've seen people make comebacks through that world. Yeah, absolutely. And especially at this point, you know, I'm sure Booba after that death probably has a feeling like there's a good chance he's behind. So we might see him actually gamble a bit in World 8. And I can't tell you how many times I've actually seen that pay off. So I, yeah, I, I completely understand that. I've actually been the recipient of a good gamble. So <laughs> it's a good feeling. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, Mitch Ooh. making the mistake there. Oof. Especially with Fort Knox, it's definitely something you don't want to do. Yeah, making an already long stage even longer. I mean, even having to do it this route and uh, grab the Tanuki suit, it just takes so much time. So yeah, second time's the charm there. Gets it through yeah. the door. <laughs> Booba's in the uh, World 6 airship now, so he's just a couple stages behind still. Tried for that the swag clip there. I don't think Mitch is going to make it. Oh, he did. Okay. Oh, oh. Just barely. So yeah, Booba with this tail, if he keeps it, this is a huge time swing for him. Yeah, so since he yeah, keeps this... the tail... That's going to help him. He's going to see that fort, and he's going to be able to beat that and save a lot of time. Ooh, here comes 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, it, it's going to save him, like, basically two stages with how much, uh, or how long it took Mitch on that one. And I, I happen to know this is Mitch's least favorite stage in the entire randomizer, so um, there's probably some words being said right now in his room. <laughs> well, he's got the fire flower, so he's in a good spot with that. Um Personally, I get really aggressive on this stage when I have a Fire Flower, just because I know I can save a lot of time, especially being able to take out the enemies. Yeah, and especially lag reduction is quite nice, too. Oh no, Booba. He was duck flying there, so he couldn't uh, get to the pipe. You hardly ever see an enemy there that you can't kill with fire, and of course, since he has fire, there's an enemy there. And yeah, he's, he's been eaten by boss bass there before, you can tell. A couple times. Yeah, I know 6-6 six, six was his downfall in his race against GamerCal, that GamerCal did take that victory from him. Mainly because of 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, sometimes you just get those evil spawns and there's not much you can do about it. Just kind of hoping that the enemies decide to do something random that benefits you. Oh my goodness. All right. It looks like we missed out on quite a few bloopers here at the beginning. <laughs> wow. Four bloopers. In the first, like, six enemies. Oh, there's another Five. one. Five. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thankfully, this section is nice. Uh, there aren't bloopers, so he's not going to have to deal with dropped inputs. And there's only one, uh, one fire piranha plant, so that's really nice. Usually yeah, when you absolutely. get two or three, it can be a disaster. So yeah, Mitch making his way through um, three, four there, not having any issues. Good use of the hammer. And yeah, at that point, there's no nowhere else to really use it, right? So yeah, he's being safe here in case there's a late spawning bass, but I think he's going to be safe here. Of course, those chain shops are quite annoying. Yeah. I'm not, I don't understand the enemy entirely, but I know their jump pattern can be kind of erratic. Yeah, for sure. 
So yeah, makes it up pretty nicely there, um, all things considered. Yeah, so he's got the World 1 airship, which is pretty easy, honestly. Some nice free level, I'd like to say. So Booba's actually going to play one less level here because uh, Mitch played that one level um, before using the hammer. So um, nice little time save here for him. Yeah, you can see there's so many enemies there, you know, so many sprites on the screen that he's just having so much problem with his inputs. Yeah, that, that, that's always an issue. That's where a lot of people like when we saw 6-6. It's getting a little crazy for him there with all those uh, bloopers, so... Definitely something you don't want to see. Enough patooies there, I don't know. I, I They probably could have added a couple more at the end there, right? Mm -hmm. so see, yeah, it World looks like one. both runners... Yeah, yeah, both runners burning through their inventory here, and it's kind of an evil World 1 setup. Gotta play it, you know, the extra level. Yeah, and the extra level is the uh, sand stage, so it's it's a fun level to play. Even with Rando, I don't mind it so much. Yeah. Looks like Mitch having a little problem there with uh, some of his inputs. The stage is actually, you know, you can run it the same way as you do in vanilla. Um, so, look if you, but if you miss an input, then all bets are off. Yeah. So yeah, this is actually not a bad... Um, Leaf, leaf usage here. He's going to be able to get up here a little quicker. Um, or P-Wing usage, I mean. Now, seeing if he's trying to try for that wall clip there. It's pretty tricky to get. Yeah, he tends to go for that one. I, I don't think that one saves any time, though. I think it actually loses time. I, I can't remember. Yeah, because considering you'd have to fight Boom Boom without a star. Yeah, especially that. Yeah, you're right. So Booba's only a stage and a half behind, so he's caught up quite a bit. Yeah, this one's definitely looking like it's going to come down to uh, World 8. Nice he was able to uh, get out of that sand quickly there, because Boss Bass was a-coming, looking for yeah. his first meal. He's been a little hungry since we got into the brackets. I don't understand P-Speed, alright? If anybody can explain to me how that man still had P-Speed, I'd love to hear it. <laughs> I don't run vanilla, so I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I mean, I can explain it, but sometimes it really feels like you just shouldn't have P-Speed in that situation, you know? A nice 4-2 there by Mitch. Real good. And Booba getting the upside-down orb. Which reminds me, Orb. I sometimes just call it bro. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, having fire in, in the uh, coin ship's really nice because you can get that double kill on the boomerang bros before they throw their boomerangs and saves quite a bit of time actually in that fight. Yeah, and they get that cloud of just kind of a late moment for that, but then again, the clouds are actually very useful in World 8 depending on the situation. Yeah, I know Mitch doesn't believe in P-Speed on this this stage, so um, I'll be interested to see if Booba goes for it. Yeah, I I don't know. P-Speed on that stage, I, I like it. I just don't have the practice on it yet. Yeah, it definitely takes a little bit. And you got, a, you got one single tile you got to do, too. So anytime you're doing a single tile jump, it's a little scary. Well, yeah, he's I see yeah, still about a stage and a half behind, so Booba's definitely keeping up with him with them entering World 8. And also getting the double kill there, so both runners getting the time save. It's worth noting that a lot of times the cloud ends up being useful in World 8 anyway. At the very least, you can get some information by clouding over something, finding a dead end, and being like, all right, I don't have to play that. Exactly, yeah. So. That oh man, that trick there that makes me nervous. That's I don't I don't go for that. <laughs> I don't it's, trust. It's not as bad as it looks. 
you, you, let's pull that off really nice. But I mean, the moment you dip into that pit, oh man, it scares me. <laughs> yeah, you definitely don't want to miss an input there because you're going to end up in the pit. Okay, so he's going to check this stage here. Oh, and there's a fort, so that's good. That's 6F3. He's going to take that hit. That's smart, so he keeps that P speed going. Yeah, you you got to love, uh, you know, when the first uh, tank you check is the tank with the fort, so... Yeah, one, you don't have to sacrifice a life or play the stage, and you don't lose your power up. Yeah, and, and you know, as we previously noted, they don't have uh, a way of quick killing Bowser right now, so if someone's able to maintain fire through this, that's going to be a huge boost. So yeah, Booba sees the leaf. He knows exactly what to do with that item. That was really good by him. I just take a grab by the hand. This time he doesn't, so he did lose his fire flower. I don't blame him. That's kind of a longer stage to play, so... Yeah, for sure. I'm taking the death as well. The other thing is, once you're past that hand, you don't have to go back across it, so it's definitely worth doing just to skip it entirely. Now, I haven't seen a lock yet, so we have no idea what we need for Bowser's Valley. Yeah, and they, they've already played the two forts, right? So we don't know. They could have potentially broke locks or... Yeah. Who... Mitch is going to cloud past that and check out this pipe. Yeah, he's going for a gamble here. Might as well, he's got a cloud, so... Well, there's a lock. There's that first lock we've seen. The top of the dark world. So, yeah, I'll be interested to see... Oh, okay, one of the levels is going to build the bridge, so... It's going to be... I think it's the airship, because the other one's got to unlock the lock to the airship, so airship's going to be required. So, looks like both the forts remaining are going to... I'm wondering if Booba's actually gonna oh, use a star there. I don't think he meant to use a star. Yeah, thankfully he's small Mario, so he can get through the pipe still. So yeah, if he goes to that fort, um, he can save a pretty significant chunk of time. Yeah, the routing here is where it gets tricky, so he's probably checking this pipe just to see where it leads. I, I don't blame him. I probably would have done the same thing. So yeah, if Mitch doesn't know, it's going to be very obvious to him now what he has to do, because he's going to see the lock break here. Yeah. And yeah. Opting to play the stage and gets a pretty quick one. Oh, I guess he remembered that. Oh yeah, I can just get there through another pipe. So. It's like Booba's Mario took an arrow to the knee or something. He's kind of yeah. just gimping through the stage. We were going to have the Air Force stage, which is 3F2. Okay, so both World 3 Forts are here. And that, that frog suit. value frog suit. Frog hype there, that's right. Frog swag, we got all of it today. You know, he did the math. He was like, you know what I haven't seen yet? Some underwater piece of garbage. Booba's right behind him. The only thing is, I don't think Booba knows where Bowser's Valley is. So... Yeah, but he's going to figure it out, I think, because he's going to move down. And he's checked everywhere else, so there's really only one path he can go in the dark area. Yeah, so Mitch so a death here by Mitch could be huge, so we'll be on the lookout for that. Yeah, let's, let's see. I don't think he will, but you never know. You've seen crazier things happen. Yeah, you know, he did die last night on a seed in Bowser's Castle, so it's possible. Nice little clip there. Yeah, got it first try. So yeah, he's going to check this for a flower and gets it. That's very nice. Booba's going to have to play the fort without any power-ups. 
but he is in Bowser's castle, so, you know, if something does happen here... And looks like Mitch is gonna take him out, I think. Alright, a little scarier than he probably hoped for, but... Good run, 33 is gonna be a... taken to death. Yeah, it's gonna be a sub-34, so that's a pretty good C there. Pretty fast, actually. Yeah. I don't think he took any unintentional deaths, so he played quite well. Yep. With that, Mitch Flowerpower does finish with the SRL time of 33.44, so make sure to give him GG's in chat. He will take race one. Booba is in Bowser's Fort, so I mean, this is this was a really close race. Even with Booba's death there, it's you know, looking about a minute, a minute and a half between the two. Yeah, it was really that hammer usage in the first world kind of, you know, put Mitch ahead and um, he stayed about that much ahead through most of it. He did, I think he got a three stage lead at some point, but then uh, Booba was able to come back a couple, so. We'll get to see uh, Bowser's beautifully programmed hitbox here. Yeah, for these, those of you that don't know, his hitbox is in his head. Of course, it, it extends a little bit further from his head, too. So, um, yeah, if you're standing under him like he is, you can sit there and hug him. And see, look at the hugs Bowser's giving him every time. Yeah, Booba finishes him off. And we've got an official SRL time of 35.16 for Booba. So as you said, yeah, a minute and a half there between the two. So really close, yeah. uh, as we kind of expected on the outset. Um, I think Booba played pretty well. I think be between a few deaths and a little bit of struggle he had there, I think without that and the early hammer use by Mitch, we would have seen a race that would have been down to within seconds. I mean, both runners played really well outside of the few mistakes they both made. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, um, this is a best of three. So the first one goes to Mitch, but uh, obviously um, things can change here and we can potentially see a third game if Boo is able to take the second one here. But um, we're getting set up for the second race. So I will be back in just a moment here um, with more randomizer action. <laughs> 